Okay, so I am back with the finished results of the mahogany dye stain formula. This piece right here is a southern yellow pine. I believe it is a rotary cut veneer. It has been sealed with a polyurethane and has three coats on here. All right, so today I'm gonna to be doing a medium mahogany color with the dyes. I'm gonna be using the keto liquid dye kit uh, in lacquer thinner. So I have six ounces of lacquer thinner and I went ahead and I pre-mixed this formula. Uh, all it was was one four teaspoon of the, the red, the crimson red, one eight teaspoon of the brown, six drops of the yellow, and three, in this particular formula, I used three drops of the black. Uh, you could go with five uh, drops if you wanted a little bit darker, uh, but for this particular one, I just went with three drops. Of the of the black so uh, this is going to be like an orangish brown type of color and um, f for my top coat sealer I'm going to be oh, I'm going to be using the uh, I'm just going to be using a polyurethane uh, and I'm going to be also applying that with a, a sponge brush <clears throat> as a, a non spraying version of a top coat sealer using the polyurethane uh, with the with the liquid wood dyes so with that said I'm using a yellow pine here this is a, a yellow pine southern yellow pine I believe is is what this is um, for my sanding preparation uh, this is the back side of a board uh, it's like the building building materials that you end up getting at like say a home improvement store uh, such as like a Lowe's or Home Depot a Fleet Farm or Farm and Fleet depending upon where you are uh, areas or stores just like that so I'm gonna also be doing the other side of this board so that way you can kind of see what it looks like on, on both sides because you know sometimes with these these building uh, sheets of building material that you know, one side can be kind of cracked up and uh, in, in somewhat bad, bad condition. So you may just want to flip it over and use the other side. Uh, so that's why I'm going to end up doing that on both, both of these types of wood, uh, or both sides of this wood, as well as I'm going to be doing this on a red American oak as well. Uh, so anyways, the, the sanding preparation I ended up using a 100 grit sandpaper to get most of the, uh, you know, the rough, the rough, uh, the uh, rough sanding done, and then I switched over to a 180 grit. Now I didn't use the wood specific sandpaper on this because I, th I thought, you know what, not everybody's going to end up having a wood specific sandpaper. So I just went with a, a generalized sandpaper. So it's just a, a general sandpaper uh, instead of a, a wood specific one. Now the difference is, is that I think with the wood specific sandpaper is that I, I get a little cleaner, a little cleaner sand out than I would with something that's a, a more multi-purpose type of uh, sandpaper. And perhaps someday if I ever find some time that I would end up making, you know, just a contrast or a comparison video on on that itself. Like what's the difference between a wood specific sandpaper and a multi-purpose? What are the advantages of using a or I should just say the advantages or drawbacks of, of using uh, either one really. So I'm just working this this die around and I'm gonna probably speed through a little bit of this I'm not gonna do uh, this for for too long a period just I'm just gonna speed it up for the purposes of the video so, this is uh, the first coat of using this mahogany color um, I'm going to actually set this off to the side now as far as the color representation I think since I put this white background on 
I have a much better color presentation for what the true actual color is in, in real, uh, real time is from what I'm seeing it. So I'm just going to set this off to the side now and bring in the back side of this, this piece. Now this is a much bigger piece. Um, I'm going to say it's probably about 16 inches by probably about 12 to 14 inches. But so this, as you can see, like with these pieces here, there's a this side and this side. So depending on the side that you want to end up using, I'm just going to do both both sides. So that way you can kind of get a good representation of what other one's going to end up looking like. Okay, so I've been working this die around the board for, I'd say probably about two, two or three minutes or so. Well, maybe a little bit longer, maybe three, three or four minutes. But um, sometimes with the liquid dies and with the lacquer thinner, it can take just a little bit, of long, a little bit longer of a time for the, uh, the die stain to start darkening uh, when, you're, when you're applying it. Uh, if you just work it around a little bit, longer it should you know, start to darken and get pretty good results so this piece is pretty much done uh, I'm just going over to kind of even it out and I'm gonna set this off to the side and I'm gonna end up grabbing uh, the oak with this being a bigger piece what I'm gonna actually do is um, I'm just gonna take a a clean paper towel here and I'm just going to give it just a light wipe down. Again this uh, this wood as well is the southern pine. I believe that this would be more of like a rotary cut uh, where where this one is more of you know potentially I believe this would be more like a, a plain slice but this could be a rotary cut as well. Uh, they're both veneer on the on the multi multi plywood as you can see here. So uh, basically, this piece is done. I'm going to set this one off to the side so this can dry as well. And I'll bring in the this is the uh, red oak, North American red oak. And uh, get to work on this as well. Um, again, this this one also I I used on actually all of these pieces. I ended up using the wood specific. I didn't use the wood specific sandpaper. I apologize for that. I did not use the wood specific sandpaper, and um, I just went with the hundred grit and the the one hundred and and eighty grit. So. Um, all right, um, so I'm going to end up working this out and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I... Uh, it was pretty easy. Uh, I just worked it around for a little bit. Uh, the, the thing that's nice with this is by adding the, the couple drops of black, it not only darkened up that dye stain, but it's also going to end up help uh, contrast those grains, these deeper grains that are, are in something like this oak here. Um, boy, that's showing up pretty decent. That's good. I like that. Anyways, uh, so this, oh, this is with the pine. The, the one side, the southern yellow pine, and 
this is that southern yellow pine on I guess I'm gonna call this the A side and this the B side or maybe it's vice versa <laughs> not exactly positive on, on how that goes but anyways so uh, I'm gonna let these completely dry out and then I'm going to come back and we'll apply the the polyurethane all right so these have had some time to dry now uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a, a toweling and just wipe it down just give it a wipe down now you could end up using something like a, a, a scuff brush a very fine grit one and go over it uh, just be careful because you could end up actually lightening the color with something like this but this can also do a good a pretty good job of burnishing uh, as well um, especially on something that's a little more dense like like oak and you don't want little fibers in your your grain of your of your oak the, a very fine grit scratch pad like this will end up doing a very good job as well so I'm going to use this on the oak that's really all there is to that <clears throat> uh, set this off to the side this is a, a bigger board uh, oh and I do have about I'd say probably about two and a half ounces of of the dye stain left uh, from from these projects so like I said this is a, a bigger board this one's probably about 16 inches by 14 inches this is about a 12 by 12 and this one uh, this one's probably about a 12 by 11 so just kind of give you a, a little bit of understanding on how much dye stain I actually went through for how much wood now I, I probably went a little more than I I needed to with the dye stain as well but you know it's for a video and I'm just trying to give a good presentation of what the color and uh, you know what the how to apply it so there so there we are now as I was thinking this through a little bit I think I'm gonna do a couple of things here so I'm gonna do the polyurethane uh, I'll do that on this board and this one I'll end up using like say a lacquer uh, and, and just spray it out I'll probably do the same thing with the with the oak as well and that way we can kind of just get a little understanding actually you know what I think I have a shellac I do uh, I have a shellac here so I'll try a couple of different uh, top coat sealers so that way we can end up seeing you know a little bit different results with uh, different top coat sealers all right so I'm just gonna pop this open I had this open before hopefully I don't have to grab my no I have to this open so this is just standard uh, clear gloss polyurethane um, fast drying so anyways I'm gonna go over the top of this the very very first coat I'm just gonna be somewhat gentle in my application and uh, this brush is a little stiff. I apologize for this. Um, the brush is just a little bit stiff. I'm just trying to loosen it up a little here. So yeah, anyways, on my very first application here, I'm going to end up trying to be a little more gentle with it. To try to not to disturb the dyes 
Uh, I shouldn't have to worry too much though because this is a, a polyurethane and it is an oil based. So I shouldn't really be in too bad a shape. All right, I'm back. I have a new brush. Oh boy. You know, if you guys knew what I had to go through <laughs> just to get this video made, you would understand this is just really par for the course. Uh, anyways, so I am just trying to apply this somewhat gently as to not disturb the, uh, the dye stain. But with the polyurethane and it being oil-based, there really won't be much disturbance whatsoever, really. I guess the biggest concern with the polyurethane is to watch out for bubbles. Polyurethane tends to end up uh, wanting to bubble up quite a bit. You know, a, an interesting thing too is that you can even use a, a roller, a paint roller, to apply poly. Now, you don't want to have a, a big, thick nap on it. You want it to be a short nap, a very short nap. And that tends to work very, very good as well. That's actually what I ended up using on my, my workbench, was a, a paint roller. And it worked out pretty well. I mean, I did get some some bubbles when I ended up starting and stopping again. So I tried to make sure I just went off of the, the surface when uh, I got to that point. But, I mean, that's something that you can try out. You know, it works really well on a, a larger surface. Uh, with this being a smaller surface, I mean, just having a small brush is going to work just fine. Okay, so anyways, I got this first coat of the polyurethane laid out on this piece. And I'm going to set this off to the side. It's looking pretty good. Um, and that's okay that it's a little bit dry up here. Sometimes that's just the the way that uh, the wood will end up absorbing the sealer. So, and with this being the first coat, that almost always happens. So, anyway, so that's kind of where we're resting with this. Um, I'm gonna set this off to the side now. I'll grab this other side. Oh. I'll grab this other side and set them off. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use the, the shellac on this side, on this board. And then I'll use the the lacquer on the oak. So this one's just going to be a shellac uh, spray can. Now with shellac, I always try to go with light coats because putting shellac on a little heavy, a little fast, can end up causing significant orange peeling. And that's just something that I've learned. Um, so, uh, you know, this is kind of the, my technique in using shellac. I'll apply it, I'll let it flash off a little bit. You know, um, and then I will just give her another little dusting. That's going to be it for my first coat on that. And that was using the shellac over the top of the, the dye stain. So I'm going to set this off to the side. The oak. And this one I'll be using lacquer. 
So it's just a regular high gloss lacquer. I just get asked that quite a, quite often about different sealers and things like that. Uh, for the most part, especially if you're spraying it, if you're spraying the, the top coat sealer on, these dyes should work with just about anything. You know, just give it a light light coat on the first application like this, and uh, you know, let it let that first coat dry out. And once that's dried, then you should be just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna just let these cure out now. I'm just setting it off to the side so that way it doesn't stick to the paper. So uh, I'm gonna let these all cure, or not cure, but dry so I can uh, do my between coat sanding or my next application and uh, I'll be back when I for that Okay, process. so this is the board that I had the shellac. I sprayed the shellac with. Uh, basically, I've noticed something here that I have somewhat of a small defect in my top coat right here not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera but there's a piece of like probably fuzz from my my sweater uh, i always end up keeping like a, a tweezers nearby when i'm doing finish uh coating um of tweezers sometimes a pin uh, but this is going to be the appropriate tool for this so i'm basically just grabbing this fuzz with the tweezers if this can show up I believe that this might be actually from the scotch bright pad so if that's showing up I can't see it really well on the camera but so that's what I basically just pulled off of the board uh, well, it looks like there may be a little bit more there even. Let me just get this light. Try to move this in a little more so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So right here, that's showing up well. I'm not too concerned about hitting the the top coat sealer uh, it seems to be in a grain area so as you can see I've so I've got that out uh, what I'm gonna do now is just kind of touch that with with the uh, with the shellac I just want to make sure that there's that it's all gone okay so now that I got that I'm just gonna run over this again I don't want to do a, a just a touch a spot touch because if I do that you can see here there's gonna be kind of like a, a little overspray look to it so I'm just gonna I mean you may be able to get away with it but I just like going back over the whole thing I mean I have to do another coat on it anyway so I'll just kind of count that as a another coat another thing too when you're working with spray uh, spray coating you want to keep your your nozzle clean this this hole in here as clean as you can so uh, I always try to clean it out when I'm done spraying it I'll just have like a paper towel or something laying by and then I'll just you know take my paper towel and, and clean this area so I guess it would be something you know just absorb any of the excess that's in there and then make sure that I don't have any debris so that way when I go to spray it the next time I don't have like a coating over my over my my spray nozzle uh, so anyways sorry about that uh, I just thought maybe it would be a helpful tip for somebody else if you're not interested in that I really apologize and um, I'll let this dry out and then I'll come back with the so other one I have these pieces uh, pretty much seal coated and stuff i'm gonna do i'm gonna show this better in the daytime 
uh, under a little better lighting situation. But again, this is the mahogany on a southern yellow pine. This is what the polyurethane, and now I remember why I don't particularly use the polyurethane on, uh, on videos like this because I've had to wait some time for uh, the oil base to end up fully uh, drying for some of the between coat sanding. Now that had uh, two coats on it and uh, this one has two coats. I did the between coat sand on it and when I say between coat sand because I know some people may not uh, understand what that I'm talking about because there's a lot of newer people to, to wood finishing which I'm really honored that you're you know coming by me. So I'm just taking like a between uh, or uh, like a sanding sponge. Uh, if it's a really bad defect, then you may have to sand it uh, completely out. But for the most part, if you don't have a lot of defects in your uh, top coat sand, uh, sealer, then I just take like a sanding sponge like this and then I'll, I'll sand it all down so it's nice and smooth, um, you know, to, to prep the next surface. It's kind of like a scuff kind of like a scuff sand scuffing it but not really a scuff sand because a, a true scuff sand would just be going over it lightly quickly just to kind of scratch up the surface for the next layer to bond and adhere to but um, it's just smoothing out the top and um, you know removing those I'm just shaking this up but um, so that's one of the the tips that I guess I can offer um, so this has two coats and I did a between coat sand like I explained and now I'll be applying the third coat and this will probably be the final coat on this. I do have the, the uh, southern yellow pine that I'll be using with the shellac on this video portion too. And now it could also vary based on, on the wood, the type of color that you're going to end up getting. So say that if you want it to go a little bit more to the orange, well then you can go with like 16 drops of, of the yellow. Um, you know, this is just kind of a, a generalized ratio. So I mean, you can slightly modify some of these uh, to get to, to a different color. So if you want a little bit more orange, add a little bit more yellow. Um, if you want a little bit darker, then go with a little more black or perhaps even a little more brown. Uh, just checking this out just to make sure that I have a pretty good, that everything, what I'm looking for is making sure that everything's all wet, uh, everything wetted out very well. It looks like there's a little bit of dryness down here. So as you can see in that light reflection, that everything is, is this wet. This is the southern yellow pine with the, the shellac. And the shellac can be a little tricky to work with sometimes. Just give it a, make sure it's shaken up well. And I'm just trying to go with a light, even coat with this. Sometimes that can be a little tricky as well using a spray can. I mean, an atomizing spray gun with shellac works pretty well. Yet, um, let me just be able to pull this off. I did I got her off so now I'm just gonna oh I'm just gonna end up touching up well both of those spots now <laughs> now if you're lucky and it didn't settle very much you won't have that um, that mark on there from the from the hair so I'm just gonna Give this a quick overall again well i'll just let it dry out and and we'll see how it ends up going um so i'll be back in a little bit 
Okay, so I am back with the finished results of the mahogany dye stain formula. This piece right here is a southern yellow pine. I believe it is a rotary cut veneer. It has been sealed with a polyurethane and has three coats on here. It was also applied with a foam brush. So I hope that this gives a pretty good color representation of what that would end up looking like. This was done with the, the same exact mahogany dye stain formula. This is just the reverse side of this board. So if you, know, you flip this board over, this is what would be on the back side of it. This is a plain slice uh, veneer cut. You can end up telling because it has these arches going with the grain. And uh, this piece has three coats on it as well, but it was done with uh, shellac, sorry, shellac instead of an oil-based polyurethane and it has a, has a nice finish to it as well. This is a North American red oak and it is the same mahogany dye stain formula except for this piece was sealed with lacquer. And um, I hope that this gives a pretty good color representation of what these could end up looking like on different uh, species and substrates of wood. And uh, I hope it ends up helping somebody out and I really appreciate you guys watching the video and. I'll try to get some more out soon. Thank you.